Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. And today I am making a uh, ephemera holder. And um, I know that y'all have seen this one that I have made in a previous video. It's been a long time ago that I made this one and I will link it in the description box below but I want to make one a little smaller than this um it's going to be eight and a half tall by four and a half wide so that is around the same size as a standard traveler's notebook so I want to make one that size for um some of my taller longer ephemera pieces and clusters that I have um this one I made the small little vellum pockets on one side and then the deeper vellum pockets on the other side. So I am pretty full in this and I have a few um, little pockets left. But I would like to make in this one that we're going to make today, um, maybe just on one side, one deep pocket for my taller ephemera and then have uh, pockets like these on this side. So this one will end up being for my smaller ephemera pieces and then these taller ones I can put into the one that we're making today. So that's just something that I'm needing myself. It's a personal need. So I decided, hey, I'll just make a video and show everybody how I do it because, I mean, like I've said in many, many past videos, um, whatever I'm doing, I like to share with y'all. That's how I started my YouTube. Anyway, um, years and years and years ago, back in 2009, with making mini albums, I loved making mini albums. I still like to make a mini album every once in a while, but they are time consuming, and I would only get maybe one video every two weeks put up, <laughs> if that's all I did was make mini albums. <laughs> because they do take a lot longer than some of the other projects that I like making here on my YouTube channel. I have uh, pieces of vellum. This is 40 pound vellum and we do sell this in the shop as of right now when this video is being made. We are out of stock but we have more ordered and it should be here next week. But this is 40 weight, 40 pound vellum. I have that for my pockets. I have my score tape out I have for my pages, I have this beautiful teal cardstock. I know that y'all just can't believe me when me and mom get out teal because, I mean, it's not like it's our favorite color or anything, right? Yes, it is. It is our favorite color. Um, anyway, this is some uh, American Crafts cardstock. It's called Weave. Now, where they got that name for this teal paper, I will never, never know. But it's a beautiful color, and I have loads and loads of it. And I wanted to come up with a project that I can use some of my 12 by 12 cardstock. Because years ago, when I was a stamping up, stamping up representative, I'll get it out in a minute, I hoarded 12 by 12 cardstock and most of it is their cardstock. I am dwindling down theirs uh, because American Crafts and Basil makes the same quality to me in my opinion and it's cheaper. Very much more affordable. So anyway I'm trying to dwindle down my 12 by 12 cardstock um, stash that I have, inventory that I have because I don't do a lot of traditional 12 by 12 scrapbooking anymore. Um, I'm usually cutting down 12 by 12 <laughs> cardstock. Um, I do like to memory keep in my traveler's notebooks and um, smaller albums. I love 8.5 by 11 right now. That's one of my favorite sizes for memory keeping and scrapbooking. So maybe you'll see a couple of those in the near future also uh, because scrapbooking is never out of style it's always in style to uh, document our memories y'all so uh, never let anybody tell you that scrapbooking is out of style okay so for my cover I'm going to use this beautiful collection from the craft consortium company it is called patina you've seen me share this before I love this cardstock and I want to hoard it all. I don't want to use any of it but you know there's new stuff coming out all the time so I've, I've got to use this. 
Um, so I'm just trying to figure out which one of these. I want some good color in the cover. Look at that, how gorgeous. It would go so well with that cardstock. But let's just figure out which one we want as our cover. Mm, let's see here. Ooh, I like that one. And see, it goes along with that cardstock too, but it's not like overpowering. I really like that one. Um, ooh, I like that too, though. Oh, yeah. Let's go with this one. I like that. Okay. So we're tearing that one out. And then when you have splattered cardstock like that, you know, you got to figure out which side you want showing, what you're going to cut off. So I believe I will cut off this part because I need it eight and a half tall. So let's go ahead and cut that. Look at the inside of that one too. So pretty. I still want this to be the outside. So let's cut off this top and we need to cut it eight and a half tall. So eight and a half. There we go. And then, of course, this will go in my scrap pile and be cherished if I don't use it in this somewhere. <laughs> and another reason that I love using vellum as the pockets because you can still see all of this in behind your pockets. So I'm going to score this at four and a half because that's where we're going to fold it. So go ahead and score at four and a half. <clears throat> and I need to turn it over and score it this way just to make sure I got a good score line and a good fold. All right, that is going to work. So what we're going to do with this ephemera holder is we're going to make a policy closure front for it. So it's going to have a little bit more sophisticated closure than just some elastic lace put around it, which this works. I'm just saying I want to make something with a little bit different of a cover um, and closure. So I'm thinking, okay, remember we've left the length on this. This is eight and a half tall by 12 long. I'm going to go ahead and score this because that's good. We're good with that. That's where our um, pages are going to be sewn in. That's going to be our spine. And then I want it to lap over. So I think I'm going to score this. I'm going to give myself one inch of um, growth. So when I say that, I mean um, when you go to fill up your ephemera, you've got, you know, your growth is here. This is, it's going to expand the more you put in it. So I'm going to give this one an inch growth mark. So I'm going to fold over and pull that up so you can see me do it. I'm going to fold over and score that. So we have that first four and a half mark there. And then we folded that over, push it all the way to the edge. And then we have that five and a half mark. Okay, then you're going to score again at four and a half and you're going to give yourself that spine okay so folding it over you're going to have a little book spine on the edge so that's going to give you your growth space there see what i did there's our little 
spine. Look at that, how spectacular that looks. Love that. You know, you start off with beautiful paper and beautiful cardstock. You don't have to do that much decorating if you don't want to. So then our uh, policy closure is going to be here. So we'll have circle, circle, and then twine, dot, 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 and that's going to be our closure for this ephemera folder, or ephemera holder. Okay, I'm not going to put my scoreboard away just yet, because we'll have to use it with this. So we need to um, cut our cardstock. I've only got three pieces for this one. Um, the other one that I showed you has six pieces of cardstock in it for the pages. That means there are um, 12 pages in that ephemera holder and it is a thick little baby. So we want to make this one a little bit thinner but still be able to hold lots and lots of ephemera. So I need to get my trimmer back up here and we're going to trim this cardstock I'm just going to go one little bitty tiny sixteenth of a hash mark under eight and a half. Okay, so just a tiny bit under eight and a half, just so that the pages sit inside the cover really well. So there is our height cut, and then we need to cut the length a sixteenth of a hash mark under nine. Because remember, our pages are going to be, or our width is four and a half. So just a touch under the nine inch mark, like so. And then get our score tile back over here. And we're going to score each one of these at the four and a half inch mark. So four and a half. Four and a half. And four and a half. So this is going to give us six pages to go in our ephemera holder. And let's Fold them over and score. Fold over, score. Do that to all three so we get a good score line. Now we can put this up for now. Okay, and I am not going to round my corners. Look at that one. It is not folded exactly how it needs to be. So let's get that fixed. I didn't bear down hard enough when I was doing those lines. So that's probably the problem. The cardstock slipped. There we go. Easy fix. I like that kind of easy fix. Now we will put these pages inside of each other like a signature in a journal. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, so that is our front flap. So this is going to go in that notch right there. Neat. Just like that. And then we will go ahead and we need to trim down. So I should have went just a little bit shorter with my length. I'm just going to leave them like that because that's how they're going to be, y'all, forever in this holder. So I'm just, I've sandwiched them together like a little book, like a little signature, and I'm putting them on my trimmer. And I'm going to trim these little bad boys. 
all the same so we get a nice flush look when we put them in our journal we might have to do it just one more time let's look let's get that top done let's go one more little time okay there we go that is lots better lots it's flush it's not i'm not getting any resistance so we are good i'm going to go ahead and sew these pages with the wax thread into that spine there and if you need um, a tutorial on book binding junk journal binding um, i just finished a little mini album and i show it in detail in that video we don't want this video to be too long i'm linking my mini journal that i did the tutorial on how to sew that in i will show y'all on this one i'm just lining up and making sure nothing's overhanging on the covers okay and then i am getting my big clips maybe if all of the pins will let them loose holding your pages where you want them and i also show how to do this in that um this one that i did a video on okay yeah everything fall down um and i will i've already got that one linked down there too so that helps you but if you're anything in the journaling world like been in the journaling world especially junk journaling for any length of time you know how to sew in a spine so i'm going to get that done my all my wax thread and i'm good with it being brown wax thread because it still goes with that and there's my little foam platform so use your all Ooh, if i can get it out and then of course you need your little blunt needle hole in the middle hole up top hole in the bottom and then you're going to sew that in so sew these three pages of cardstock in and i will be right back i have mine in there they are all sewn in okay and we are going to start on our pockets i went ahead and put on my back cover pocket so look here it's not over the line where my extra spine is going to be and then it's not it leaves room on that side okay and it measures four and a half by four and three quarter inches and after we do our gusset we're doing a fourth inch gusset all the way around on those three sides it ends up being four and a quarter tall by four and a quarter wide so we have a nice little square pocket and see i've already put some of my taller ephemera in here pieces that just would not fit in that other uh, a femur holder so I needed some with some taller pockets so on my front cover I'm going to do another one the exact same so I need it to be I think I've cut this one almost correct but maybe not yep one of these sides needs to be four and a half so we've got four and a half by four and three quarters so there's four and three quarter side here's the four and a half side and then on the piece of vellum now this is just for your inside covers this cover and this cover the page pockets will be a different size so don't cut me off <laughs> don't stop watching here because your page pockets are going to be a different size because your pages are more narrow than your cover itself all right so we're going to do 
quarter inch score line on three sides. Now, if you want to put notches in the tops of your pockets, you can. Uh, on my inside front and back covers, I'm probably not going to put a notch, but on my page ones, I probably will. I did notice that I didn't put notches on the ones in that other one that I've shown you. And sometimes the smaller stuff is harder to get out. But now this is going to be for my big ephemera. So, you know, I probably won't need the notch, but I'll probably do the notch just on the pages anyway. Okay, so you're just going to fold over your little score lines and get them where they need to be. Then you can come back and burnish them down with your bone folder. But sometimes fourth inch score line is so small that it can be a little bit frustrating to get it turned over exactly how it needs to be. So just take your time turning over that fourth inch line. Hold your finger on it when you're starting to burnish it down just to make sure it doesn't go wonky on you because you know you're working with vellum vellum is uh, a flimsy product but it is so good for ephemera pockets i love using vellum for ephemera pockets okay you've got all of those um scored down then you're going to unfold it really quickly just so that you can trim out that square and get that bulk out. It works so much better if you just trim out the little square. Then you're going to put your score tape on. I'm using eighth inch score tape. That is my score tape of choice and my adhesive of choice for pockets. I love me some eighth inch score tape. Anybody that has been on my channel for a while, you already know that. <laughs> you could have answered uh, what kind of adhesive I was going to use before I even got it out, couldn't you? Have? Okay, that little corner is acting crazy. I'll get that fixed in just a second. Get my score tape on all three of those sides and then figure out what is going on over here. Okay, I've got a little bit of resistance here, so I'm going to snip out just a little bit more of that and see if it'll take care of it. Okay, yep, that's better. Now, I'm going to take off my backs. And before I put my pocket down, I'm going to make sure that this bottom flap is on the outside of the two side flaps. And I'm going to press that bottom flap into my side flaps so that I've got a nice little sandwich already going there. Okay, then we're going to place this pocket. Mm, I've still got a little bit of a notchy notch there that's not wanting to there we go just cut it off woman then we're going to put our pocket in here like so and we're leaving space so it doesn't overlap here we're leaving space at the bottom so it doesn't overlap on the bottom and then we're leaving space on this side so it doesn't interfere with our signature going back and forth. Then we're going to get our bone folder and burnish those gussets down. You can see when they make contact with that cardstock when you burnish like that. All right, so we've got our front pocket in we've got our back pocket in and I already got some ephemera back there. Beautiful. I know I will get this question so I'll go ahead and answer it. Um, we've got this 
larger end here. So when I'm storing this ephemera journal, it will go in my bookcase like this. So other books will be around it like this. And this will be my outside spine that you see when you're looking at it from the bookcase. So I'll go in that way, right? Just a little bit different because we've got um, an outside expander spine here. Now, let's cut our pockets for our pages. Now, our pages are a little slimmer than our front and back, po uh, front and back cover, so we need these pockets to be a little more narrow. So what I'm going to do is cut, so these page pockets are going to be four inches wide, so we need to cut our vellum four and a half for our quarter inch gussets on the side. And then this front page, I'm going to make, now you can make your pockets any size you want, any height you want, and you can stack them like I did these. So you can make tiny little pockets like this and stack them on the page like I did here. So I've already got one like this. So this one, like I said, is for my big ephemera. So I'm just putting one pocket per page. I'm not going to stack any pockets. So my front page pocket is going to match this one. So it's going to be the same height. I'm going to cut it four and a half, give myself a gusset, and then that's going to make it that same height. It's just going to be a little skinnier. And then this one, same thing. Now for the inside here, I'm going to make some pockets just a little shorter. They're going to be the same width, so I'm still going to cut them four and a half wide and do my two quarter inch uh, or one fourth inch gussets on the sides. But uh, my height is just going to be three and three fourths cut, and then I'll do my little fourth inch gusset at the bottom. So that's going to give me a three and a half inch pocket on the insides of my pages just so that I can store like um, I've got these I'm trying to get all of my die cuts and ephemera the huge ones like this I'm trying to get all of them off of my shelf over here and in um, organized holders so like these came out of the same Tim Holtz packet and these are taller and they work great in this pocket that is four and a quarter tall. But like this one is shorter than these. So they would kind of get lost down in that four and a half or four and a quarter height. But they would be fine in a three and a half. So this tag here is just a touch over like uh, let's see four and an eighth tall so in a three and a half inch tall pocket it would work amazing so see if I put it down in here you barely got a little bit showing at the top so I mean it will work but you really have to struggle to get that out so I want to make my inside pockets here just a little bit shorter so these pockets that I put here and here here and here will be for my taller ephemera and then these inside page pockets will also be for big ephemera but maybe some of them are a little bit shorter I want to be able to get to them so that is my thinking behind all of that and so I'm going to cut an inside pocket and let you see that I will cut one of these pockets and let you see that then I'll go off camera and finish all of my pockets and come back and show you the flip through. Um, I need to cut my vellum for the inside pockets three and three fourths by four and a half. So three and three fourths by four and a half. And then I'm going to score quarter inch mark on all three sides all right so quarter inch one fourth inch one fourth inch 
and I'm going to flip it over and do one fourth inch again. Whoop. Okay. And then fold over, fold over, fold over on all three sides. Remember, just work with that score line. Don't get frustrated. It will work out. Okay. There and come on, Bill, and work with me. Work with me. There we go. And then I'm going to trim off. my little corners here then I'm going to use my bone folder and fold up burnish my score lines making sure that everything lines up and we don't have any resistance on the corners and pull that bottom flap to the outside and squish it up against your side flaps making sure that it stays on the outside pockets just work better for me that way so that's why I'm telling you that okay let's go to our first inside page we're not doing this one that size we're doing our inside pages and let's go ahead and notch this I'm using a one and a half inch circle punch and I'm going to make myself a notch and sometimes the circle punch does not want to cooperate with vellum that's okay I need to sharpen that circle punch don't I so I'm just going to use my scissors to do the rest of that. And that's a pretty good semicircle, if I do say so myself, that I had to trim myself. And then I'm going to go to the page, being sure not to get too close over here because you don't want any kind of resistance or bunching up. So go as far out to the edge as you want, just giving yourself that little bit still showing all the way over. And then you're going to burnish down that score tape, making sure you're good and stuck. There we go. All right, let's find that ephemera. See my little short, my little short ephemera. It's still big, but it's shorter than some of the others. So these three and a half inch pockets work really well for those. Now you can still put really tall ephemera in these also, and you can fill up the page. Okay, so that is my idea behind this. And let's go ahead and make our front uh, pocket to match this one along with you. So these pockets for that front and the back to match the ones on the inside covers need to be four and a half by four and a half okay so four and a half four and a half and then quarter inch score on three sides
So here is my pocket to match this one. Just a little bit more narrow. And we're going to put this just in the middle. So these um, front pages be very easy to put these on. You just kind of um, get it right in the middle of your page. You don't have to worry about this edge. And then burnish that. Remember I said I wasn't going to notch this front or back. So that's going to be for my nice tall ephemera. Now look, uh, I didn't go down as far as I should have. So now this one is a little taller than this one. You know what? I don't care. We're good. So that's going to hold some of my taller ephemera also. Look at there. Perfect. So I'm going to have room for lots of tall ephemera. And then here's my shorter one. Remember these inside pages that I notched are three and three quarters by four and a half and then you um, do a score of a quarter on three sides and that gets you your inside page pockets and then I will do another pocket just like this one for this back cover here or this back page here and I will get all of those done and then we'll come back I'll show you all of my pockets then we will do our policy closure on the front and do any kind of decorating if we want to decorate some now I have all of my pockets put in there are my pockets okay and I've taken my stuff out of this front pocket because we're going to need um, part of this to put our policy closure on so we're going to need that space there and then we'll cover that up to glue something down to cover up our brad legs that we use cover that up so it'll be a smooth transition uh, in and out of that pocket so we're going to put a policy closure so one piece will be here and one piece will be here I will need my awl again uh, because I don't have one of those um, crocodiles that goes all the way across the page. I just have one of the little short crocodiles. So to make the hole, I need my awl here. Now I'm going to measure my closure. Okay, so we're eight and a half tall. So the middle need to figure out where middle is and then we need to um, make our marks where we need to put our all holes to put in our policy closure now for this also I have cut three one inch circles these are going to be on the bottom that's going to be on top so it kind of is a going to be a matchy matchy thing and then I've got a long leg or long prong brad that I will put in the middle after I punch the hole. And I can punch the holes on those with my crocodile. So let me get that. And then same thing here. Three um, one inch circles. And they're all stacked on top of each other. And we can go ahead and punch the holes for those. Let's do it the small hole on the crocodile and we're going to make a mark in the middle of these and I mean if you want to measure you can I'm not too big of a stickler as far as the middle of these circles so I'm just going to punch and before I lay them down go ahead and put my brad through them okay and then whoops, line these up and get that hole and go ahead and put my brad through that one so they all stick together they all stay together 
And then we are going to make a mark on this flap and then we'll make a mark over here. So we have eight and a half. Our midline is four and a quarter. And then this flap is two inches wide. So we need to go to the one inch mark and then the four and a quarter mark. So four and a quarter is here. I'm just gonna make a little faint line or faint dot. And then we're gonna go over to the one inch mark. Find my dot, so there's my dot right there. This is two inches wide, This, or just a touch over two inches wide. So we're just gonna make our mark here. That's where we need to place our awl, is on that circle that I just made. All right, now I know that my circle over here also needs to be in this same spot. So I'm gonna to go to the spine over here, line up my ruler. This is a T-square ruler. I love this thing. Okay, and then I'm going to, as closely as I possibly can, make a mark over here in the middle of this. If you want to measure that, go for it. I'm just going to willy-nilly pretty much get my mark made and I'll be good with it. It doesn't have to be in the middle of this. I just wanted it in the middle of that flap. Okay, then I'm going to open this up and look and see we're going to get that if we do it right there it's going to end up being right at the top of that pocket duh melina so you need to go up some so i will get it where that is covered up but we need to go up about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to, I mean, trial and error, y'all. I'm showing you all my mistakes, too. So let's go up a quarter of an inch. So there. If we put it there, and let's just go ahead and mark where that would be. Yes, we would be above the pocket there. I won't be getting my pocket all messed up by putting it at the four and a quarter. So we're just going to go up with it. It does not have to be in the exact middle. Anybody that tells you it has to be in the middle of things is just wanting to be mean. Because you can put your closure of your journal wherever you would like to put it. Okay, so we are going to make our all hole, making sure to do the right one since I've made two separate holes. So there's my first one, and then I'm going to open this up. And make my other all hole there and open it up and make sure whew, <sighs> we're not in the pocket yay and I know what some people are thinking if she would have looked at that first and um, not put a pocket on the inside hey I wanted a pocket on the inside so <laughs> I want to do it anyway okay I think I want to put yeah, let's put the green one here. And we're going to twist it so that the legs go up and down. And then we're going to put the brown one here. 
and I'm going to twist it so that my legs go back and forth on this one just so it will obscure that pocket. I'm going to go ahead and lay out those legs and then I'm going to use the handle of my crocodile to get those nice and flat and lean that over. Then I will put another one inch circle on top of that. So I'm going to glue that on top of it. I like that side even better. And glue it down really good with some score tape that's going to hold better than liquid glue in my humble opinion so let's get our score tape yeah let's do that side and go all the way across a couple of times and then we can put um, liquid glue on the edges also to cover those prongs up. Now if you'll notice I have not closed those prongs on that side. We're going to put our string around that before. And then glue around where the around the edges where the score tape is not. Then we're going to open up our pocket and cover up those prongs and keep your pocket open so you don't get any glue inside your pocket. And I like to put my rag on the inside like that, making sure all the excess glue is up. So that takes care of that, and we can still get stuff down in there, and it's not going to get caught too awfully bad. But we're going to let that get all nice and dry before we put anything down in there. I'm going to actually leave my rag like that. Okay, for this side, we need to go ahead and put our string in, and I'm going to use this gold leaf baker's twine. I love this. So I'm going to put it around that way. Make sure to give myself enough room to tie some knots and then I will go ahead. I'm going to do my brad prongs this way on this side and we'll cover that one up too. So it doesn't get caught on anything. Okay, got that there. Let's tie our, I think we're good with a rag. Let's tie the ends here and go up under that as tight as you can get it. Double knot. And then we're going to close this up, get worked around this one, and figure eight it as many times as we would like. Oh yeah, I like that. And then we're going to trim off that tail there, right up under that circle but not cutting our other baker's twine there we go and then we'll go ahead and trim this off here so there is our policy closure for this neat little ephemera holder you see we already need most of that spine that expanded spine that we made so you unfurl your string closure, your policy closure, and then I will punch another one inch 
circle punch. And I'm going to cover up that brad there. So we're going to turn that over, put two pieces of score tape, and then liquid glue the rest of it, just like we did the other one. Okay, and then everywhere that there's not score tape, put liquid glue. And then we'll cover up those brad prongs. You do not have to do this step. I just like the finished look of it. Those brad prongs are all covered up nice and neat. I mean, you're never going to want to take the string closure apart anyway. So, all right, now we can put our stuff back in this pocket. See, even with that brad back behind there, we get no resistance. We're good with that. And that one is good enough dried that we can put our string back around. And the more you do this, the more you put your string uh, back and forth and back and forth, the more these are going to work with you. So don't worry if you get a little bit of resistance when you first make the string closure. So I'm very happy with this. I think we do need a few little decorations on here. Maybe a cluster of some kind, a collage cluster of some kind. But we do need some type of decoration. It's a little too plain, isn't it? So let's find maybe a word label of some kind. Um, I really like those. Ooh, maybe put one of those word labels here and maybe find a die cut of some kind and put up here. I like those, so let's do that. I think these are from uh, My Porch Prints. Okay, let's do... Let's do journal. Let's just do that one. Trim that one out. Then I'll use walnut stain oxide and get it a little darker. And then kind of dirty it up some too. There we go. And then Mm, I think I will put it there since it's a little too wide to go there, huh? Yeah, then that way I don't cover that up because I like, I like the look of that. So let's go ahead. So I've been looking for a place to use this little card. I think it is the prettiest little thing with the butterflies and moths on it. So I want to use that there. What I'm going to do is put a little piece of cardstock back behind this and just glue it on on the flap so I will have that kind of overlapping that flap and just won't glue it down here I'll have that and then I cut this little piece off of a washi sticker I thought that would be very pretty like that too so let's do that the rest of it I'm going to leave as is so I need to take my backing off of this washi sticker which can be troublesome. Just kind of bend it back and forth. Then I'm going to kind of measure where I need to put that. Trim off my excess here. Okay. So there's my little greenery sticker. Washi sticker. Let's ink the edges of this. And we can go ahead and glue that down. And then we'll get some cardstock to go back behind that word label. I like that. Very nice. Let me hold it up and make sure that it's straight. And it is not, of course. So instead of putting everything down there, we could 
do this little journal piece up here with the uh, piece of cardstock back behind it. And let's use some craft cardstock from my scrap pile. And let's just cut a rectangle of it. Just going to kind of use that as my measurement. Stick it under here. Let's go. Yep, that's about good. Right there, that was easy enough. Nice little piece of scrap craft card stock. And let's round these corners. <coughs> And ink it with my walnut stain. I love craft cardstock inked with walnut stain. It's just very old and distressed looking. Very nice. Go ahead and glue this onto our cardstock. I'm going to dirty this up just a little bit because it's very light compared to the rest of the journal. That's better. And then I think not too far up, but go ahead and put it on about there. I like that. So I'm going to use um, my score tape and I'm going to make a mark on the back of this so as not to go over that point with my score tape. And the rest of that will be free on that other side. <laughs> so just a few pieces of score tape. Then I have score tape over that way and not over here and then I'm going to place this down and make sure it is straight before I press it all the way down and make sure that none of that glue is going over the edge okay I'm going to open this up and then flatten that down so now we have this little flap or tab there going over our string closure i like the look of that so now you can decorate yours any way you want y'all know me i don't like decorating that much i like using beautiful cardstock and not having to so there's the front of mine decorated. I'm not going to do anything to the back. Look how pretty that is. And then look at that. That's like my favorite part of this whole ephemera journal is that solar or space looking expander spine that we made. So uh, let's go through this one more time showing you everything. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them in a timely manner. So let's open up this string closure and we've got our front pocket, front page pocket, and then all of these nice little pockets inside here. Ah, look at there. I missed two. I'll get those put on there. I missed two pages. How in the world I did that? Because I counted them and counted them and counted them. Oh well. I missed two pages. I'll get those pockets put on those. <laughs> uh, pockets. And then back page pocket. Back cover pocket. Our string closure. I really, really love this ephemera journal, y'all. Uh, thank you for sticking around and watching me make it. If you have, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye, y'all.